Hello friends, welcome to the extremely hot, humid North Carolina here in mid-June. We are going to have some record-breaking temperatures today here in North Carolina. I know a lot of the country, a lot of the South, uh, all of just tons of areas. It seems like we're either having extreme heat or some of you are having really cool springs, um, early summers. I know it's not technically summer yet, but it sure does feel like summer here in North Carolina. Brenna and I have already been out early this morning getting lots of watering done. Uh, we're gonna have like record temperatures today. It's gonna be extremely hot. We've not had any rain uh, really to speak of, so we did some watering, but that is not gonna stop me from getting out into my garden because there are still some chores that need to be done. So I thought it would be fun if you just kind of came along with me for the ride. There are three main goals that I want to get done um, and I am going to move around according to where the sun is. So the first things we're gonna, um, one spot's already in the, sh in the sun, so we're gonna hit it and then kind of move and hopefully get to the shade before the sun hits it. Uh, so what are we gonna do today? Well, first of all, I have my machinery of choice today is the tractor. The nursery's open, Jerry and all the crew are working on different things. So Jenny gets to go old school and has the tractor today. I have four of these absolutely gorgeous, these are the Radiance, um, what are these things called? Caladiums. Oh my word, y'all. Radiance Caladiums from Proven Winners. There are four of them. They are absolutely beautiful. They have, um, of course, as you can see, that pink, green, and white. They are going to go into my four unique stone urns that are here between my garden boxes at um, up at, above the cottage garden. So what I have are these four urns. I will put the names down for you. And I have them on pedestals because I originally didn't get pedestals, but then I realized they were too short. I needed to elevate them. So I love these. And there's four of them across the back. And you can see that they are looking very, very sad because they still have violas in them from the fall. These are not on irrigation. We are going to change that today, but clearly these are sad. They need some love. So we are going to repot these with those Radiance Caladiums. And then I'm going to show you, this is the last thing because this is going to be in my shade. But first what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the back porch. I want to show you my trick on how I really fertilize and soak my hanging baskets. These are not on irrigation right now. You can definitely tell that they need some love. So we're going to do that and then I'm going to deadhead some roses. So without further ado, we're going to go get those baskets soaking in some good fertilizer water. Okay, so I've got these two hanging baskets on the back porch that have um, the mini vista white super tunia in them and then um, an alyssum. I believe this is white knight that's in here. They need a lot of love. They, um, <laughs> they desperately need to be fed. Let me show you my quick little trick that's super easy and low maintenance on how to best really soak and saturate your hanging baskets so that they get lots of good water, lots of good food, and we'll give them a good shot to get them through this heat of the summer. All right, so step one is I got the hanging baskets down and I placed them in, I have two large like rubber trugs that I use for like everything, weeding and watering, whatever. Whatever you can have that will hold water, maybe it's like a large, um, I know my mama uses, it's actually a cement, a pan made for like cement mixing. You can get them at the big box stores. It's black, it's about, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 inches deep, that it's nice and wide. She uses that a lot. Whatever you have that will hold water that your hanging basket will fit down into, that's what you want. So what we're gonna do 
because we have them in the containers. I'm going to mix up my um, liquid fertilizer, the Proven Winners liquid fertilizer. I will show you how to do that. Then we're going to pour it down into the hanging basket and let it sit in that fertilizer water while we do the rest of our chores. That way it really soaks up all that good yummy food and that water. And then once those are chores are done, we'll come back, take them out of the water and then hang them back up and they will be good to go. Um, any of that fertilizer water that is left in the tubs, I can then take and apply to my annuals that are in the ground or a different location. So there's zero waste because if you know, if you've done fertilizer with hanging baskets before, it feels like you pour it in and it just goes straight through. So this is a great way to really give your hanging baskets the food they need and to be the most efficient with your fertilizer. Okay, my friends. So what I have is my watering can. This is a two gallon watering can. Doesn't matter what size watering can you have or if you have a bucket that you know the measurement of it. So if you know if it's like a one gallon bucket, a two gallon, so forth, five gallon bucket. And then the fantastic uh, Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer. This is great. This is the only one that I use. So it comes in, um, it has your scoop for you. So your measuring scoop, you've got that. And then you've got two bags of your water soluble fertilizer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our bag. And since this is a two gallon watering can, we're gonna put two scoops of fertilizer into the can. Then we're gonna add the water, zhuzh it up as I say, Simple as that. Easy peasy. Now, for this time, I am going to um, go ahead and add the slow release fertilizer in the top of the baskets. This is not something I do every time. I put the slow release fertilizer into the hanging baskets when I first planted them, and that was months ago. They need a little bit of extra food um, when I'm not doing this, so this is a great time to go ahead and add it in. It is the time release fertilizer from Proven Winners. It just shakes, so I'll just shake it on the top. It is released by temperature, so on these hot, hot days, more food's gonna be released, which is fantastic nice dark green leaves and it's going to give me lots of flowers so this one time i'm going to do both of the fertilizers i am not over fertilizing it is it's what you got to do because these are very heavy feeders so there wasn't very much in there it was really equaled out to be about a tablespoon which is a serving and then i simply take my fertilizer water and i'm going to pour it in the top so i'm going to that way all the fertilizer will soak through what comes out of the bottom will simply go into the container. It will sit there and soak it up while we do the rest of our chores. Once we're done, I'll come back, let it drain out, rehang it, and they're good to go. So we're gonna do it for this one, and then we're gonna go next door and do it for the other one. Okay, friends, hanging baskets are soaking in their fertilizer water. Uh, Jimmy is officially drenched and soaking in sweat, and it's not even, I don't know, 10 o'clock this morning. It's gonna be a doozy. So we're gonna get this one done really quick because this is where the sun is coming. Right behind me, this is where I have my um, new David Austin roses planted. Of course, back porch, that's right where we were. Um, I have the beautiful, oh my goodness, it's doing fantastic. This is the Rockin' Playing the Blues um, Salvia. The pollinators are just absolutely loving this plant that I knew they would. It is covered in bumblebees. But where we're gonna focus on are my new David Austin roses. They need to be deadheaded because I need to deadhead roses to encourage new growth. Sorry for the shadow there. But you can see, for example, that cluster of where the roses were, the blooms, um, those are going to turn into rose hips. And I want to encourage new growth, so I am going to cut those off. Um, here, I have new buds. I am going to leave those alone. Uh, but yeah, so I've got three sections of three roses each. And we're going to go through here. There's a one. You can see my shadow. 
there's the two, and then there's the third down at the end. So what we could do is very simple. <laughs> Brenna is trying to roll. Bless her, look at her. She's trying, rolling the azaleas. Brenna, I know, it's hot y'all. So what we do, let me show you, it's really simple. All right, again, we're working with the sun here. So <laughs> sitting here beside Ruald Dahl, and I have my great little snips. These are Felcos, these are fantastic. I will put the exact name on them. Remember, if you go to Felco and you use our coupon code, you will get um, some 10% off of your order. So these are fantastic for doing work like this. So what I wanna do is just come in here and take off the, um, the old blooms, the rose hips, and get rid of those. I'm just gonna clean up the plant, and all I do is just go down to the first set of like true leaves on it, and I'm snipping them off because I want the energy not to go into producing rose hips. Um, I do that in the fall because I get beautiful color. I want my energy to go back into producing more foliage and more blooms. So I'm gonna go in, snip all this up, clean them up, and then that way we get another flush of blooms. I'm trying to stay cool. Okay, friends, so the roses are uh, deadheaded. They are doing great. Uh, <laughs> full disclosure, while I was um, transitioning from one project to the next, I went ahead to go turn off some irrigation uh, up here to near the cottage garden and the emitter, I don't know what you call it, um, <laughs> the valve came off and was shooting water all up in my face. So. <laughs> So I was able to call Jerry and be like, help, I don't know what to do. Uh, so we went, I went and found the wa main water valve, but you can see right here, uh, Brenna is exploring. So here in the box, it has all our controls and you can see that it literally just came unscrewed. So um, yeah, this is what came off. So I'm not sure if it just screws back in but that was where water was shooting out all up in my face. It actually felt pretty good. I'm thinking I can just screw it back in now that the water is done shooting. We'll see. All right, yeah, that's all I had to do. So um, I had water shooting all over my face. So between the irrigation breaking and the sweat, I am completely soaked. It's a great day to be gardening. Truly is though. So now we're up in the shade. We're gonna take care of these urns. At first, I'm gonna get all of them emptied. Again, it's been really dry. They should just pull right out and be a whole section. I will throw them into the bucket of the tractor, dispose of them later. And then I'm gonna run irrigation line both through the urn and the pedestal. That way we can hook it to the irrigation in, from the boxes on, on that. So when the garden boxes run, the urns will run as well. So we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup here. And uh, I would say I might, might dry off, but with this humidity, not gonna happen. Okay, so I thought there was a hole in the pedestal. There's not which actually works out pretty good for me. So what I'm gonna do is I have these great little pot risers. We've talked about these before. I got these off of Amazon. They're linked in our Amazon store. You can go um, check those out. So I will put these underneath the 
urn so that way it raises it up just a little bit and the irrigation line won't get pinched therefore water can flow through nice and easy great thing is i can see exactly where my urn was because i have a little bit of a water stain so i'm going to put four of these little squares down it'll raise it up then i've got my irrigation line i'll run up from the bottom kind of tuck it behind the urn and it'll connect right here into the irrigation of the garden boxes easy peasy All right, my friends, um, I have got two of the urns uh, hooked up with irrigation, so that is great. I've got two more to do, but I'm gonna stop because you can see I'm standing here right beside my gorgeous tomato plants that these are sun gold tomatoes. They make these most delicious, sweetest um, little cherry tomatoes and they're orange. They're the color of the sun and they are delicious. And I was poking everybody, like kind of, you know, putting everybody back in the cage so that they are behaving correctly and i noticed a problem and i'm going to share this with you because this is extremely common with vegetable gardening especially tomatoes that you need to know about so what i was doing is i was um, in this area getting the um, like i said the the branches back tucked in and i noticed my branch right here do you see how it is like there's no um, leaves on it it is like somebody came through with clippers and clipped it off you see that that is the warning sign wah, 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 that I have a tomato hornworm. So when you see that, go up and look up because they normally will go up. And as I was tucking this particular branch in, um, it snapped and I was like, oh, oh darn. But do you see right there? Hopefully the camera is focusing. That is a tomato hornworm and they are nasty little boogers that will defoliate your tomato plant really, really quickly. Um, let me put him down and make sure I can get a good angle on this. Okay, so it's called a tomato hornworm because it has that little horn right there. It's not really a horn, but I mean, anyway, that's just what it is. But they are these huge, they will get much bigger than this and they're extremely camouflaged. Can be really hard to find sometimes. Um, yeah, so when I find this, they die. Uh, I won't show it to you on camera because some of you may be a little squeamish, but big, huge caterpillar and it will completely defoliate your plant in just a matter of days. So you need to get rid of them and be very aware of them. to my friends um i am officially done for the day i am hot i am sweaty i have sweat sweat dropping <laughs> i can't even talk sweat dripping off my nose um but look at those caladiums don't they look so pretty and happy in there everybody's nice and well watered um once i get the irrigation hooked up and it's on that regular schedule i really will just kind of spot check them make sure everybody's doing okay gets acclimated in there even with these high temperatures that we're having they will handle it just fine caladiums man they're one of those few plants that love the heat and the humidity they will practically grow before my very eyes and just do great give me nice big pops of color right here and then when the hydrangeas behind them start blooming it's really going to pop and be gorgeous so what i am going to do though is go simply take out 
the hanging baskets out of the containers and let them drip dry just a little bit there on the porch. They are very, very heavy because those are um, big containers. I think those are like 16 or 17 inches across. So it's really heavy. So I will let them drain a little bit and then I'll probably get somebody to help me hang them back up. But that's it. Use that fertilizer water that's in that container. I'll fertilize the other annuals that are around and easy peasy. Now, if you can do that like once a month, that would be fantastic. Again, I put that slow release fertilizer in there, that second dose for this season. So that time, way, every time I water it, it will um, be getting some food. But if you can give them that uh, water soluble fertilizer at least once a month in this method, they'll make a huge difference. So I am gonna go drink my body weight in cold water and just relax, cool off a little bit, and then carry on the rest of my day. Y'all stay cool out there. It is hot. Take care of yourself. Take care of your plants. Have fun. Enjoy it. As always, thanks so much. Y'all have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye, friends.